Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatif Allah a question was asked Assalamu alaikum ya ustad I'm truly in a state of confusion because for almost a year now I have been looking into the books of fiqh and the hadith and the fatawa of the scholars of Islam of all times I've been confused about the permissibility of singing accompanied with instruments that does not have bad lyrics of course all of the music of today is definitely haram but what about like soft instruments and modest lyrics that is calming and not enticing uh, you know is it haram to me it seems that both sides of scholars have strong dalil taken from hadith and from the tafsir please advise me secondly is Alama Sheikh Ibn Jibreen someone to take knowledge from there's a book I have of fatawas compiled from bin Baz, bin Uthaymeen, and bin Jibreen. May Allah have mercy on them all. But some Salafi brothers tell me that Sheikh Ibn Jibreen was an innovator and an Akhwani and do not wish mercy upon him. Is this true or are they slandering a great faqih? First of all, Habitifillah, these are uh, big questions and these questions deserve their Haq, they deserve their rights. And we ask that Allah Jal blesses us to give a sufficient, simple answer from the book in the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and what the contemporary scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah uh, espouse. And so with that being the case of Habitifillah, it's very important, the first question you asked about music. And you said that you find it confusing. And with regards to this, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, first I want to say, I don't know any scholars of Ahl Sunnah, Tiwil Jama'ah, well a wahid, that I, that I mean, that are following the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the men had the Salaf of this Ummah. Because we have to remember, that when we talk about Qur'an and Sunnah, many people they say Qur'an, okay, the Qur'aniyun, they suffice themselves with the Qur'an. And then there are many from the Ummah who say, we follow Qur'an and Sunnah. وَهَذَا جِمِيلٌ جِدًّا This is very beautiful and this is what is matloob, this is what we must do. However, there is a third component that we can't neglect. Meaning that when we talk about the Qur'an and the Sunnah, it's muqayyid which means that it's restricted. It's restricted to what? It's restricted to the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. That's what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Sunnah's Fatawa from others who may have something from Ahl Sunnah, but then they mix it with some uh, aray, uh, uh, you know, some afkar and some ideologies and some thoughts and some ways of thinking and some methodological issues from other jama'at, other groups that are outside of the fold of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Laysa Islam. I'm not saying that they're disbelievers. No, we're saying that they are not of those who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. So first and foremost, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Al-Luqman, and of mankind is he who purchases idle talks from the path of Allah. So this is those who makes istilal from this ayat, uh, many of the ulama of the salaf, they make use of this verse as an evidence for the impermissibility of singing and music. The scholar Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said, this means singing. So he explained this in his tafsir, tafsir Ibn Abbas, that this means singing. This verse refers to singing. This idle talk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is referring to singing uh, Mujahid, one of the great mufassireen of the tabi'in. He said, uh, this means playing the drum, uh, a tabal. And this is in Tafsir al-Tabari. So if you go to the Tafsir, you'll find uh, more explanation about what they meant, what this ayah meant, meant, and what other verses in the Quran that are used mean. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, This ayah was revealed concerning singing and musical instruments. Tafsir ibn Kathir. You'll find this in Tafsir ibn Kathir. Imam al-Sa'di, who's one of our contemporaries, uh, a great scholar, who was one of the scholars of Sheikh uh, 
Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahumullah jami'an, he said, this includes all manner of haram speech, all idle talk and falsehood, and all nonsense that encourages kufr and disbelief, the words of those who say things to refute the truth and argue in support of falsehood to defeat the truth, and backbiting, slander, lies, insults and curses, the singing and musical, musical instruments of the shaitan and musical instruments which are of no spiritual or worldly benefit. You'll find this in Tafsir as saadi uh, And there are many, many other, uh, the uh, ulama, the a'imma of the deen, they spoke extensively about these, uh, about this uh, mas'ala of music. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fi kitab al-Kareem, and befool them gradually, those whom you can amongst them, with your voice. Uh, and this is in Surah Al-Isra, that uh, the Mufassirin, uh, Mujahid, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentions that this is, this fooling them with the, uh, with the voice, through the voice, or vocally, that this is referring to the shaitan, and the voice of Iblis is singing and falsehood. And Ibn al-Qayyim expounds upon that uh, extensively. And also, likewise, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this you'll find in, uh, uh, this is in uh, Bukhari, and this is also in Tabarani and Al-Bayhaqi, uh, he mentioned, and my, among my ummah there will certainly be people who permit zina, silk, alcohol, and musical instruments. So from these nusus, these texts, before we get to akwal of, uh, of different scholars, that should suffice us to know that in general there's a tahrim for music. Now if we go to the intellect as well, we know for those of us who uh, have experienced disbelief and now are blessed with belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought them khair especially I can speak from personal experience I'm going to give you an example I used to DJ I used to be a uh, singer if you would call it and a rapper if you would wish to, to call it so I have performed and know and understand and to this day I still remember my lyrics, and I remember the lyrics of so many artists I can come off my cap anytime. It shows you the tathir, the effect of music and how it stands in your heart. Think of how hard it is for you to memorize the Quran, but how easy you can memorize Machine Gun Kelly's music, or you can memorize 50 Cent, or you can rem uh, memorize Rehana, or all the other top artists that are out there today, you can memorize their lyrics from hearing it a few times and you, you, it catches on with you because it appeals to your desires and it's easy to come. But when it comes to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the, the, the perfect divine speech of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, you find difficulty. And this is from the tabiat al insan. This is from the nature of mankind. So, as the scholars, some of the scholars mention that it is the Qur'an of the shaitan, that the music is the Qur'an of the shaitan. From that nas of the Prophet wasallam, we see that he referred to musical instruments uh, as uh, being muharram. Okay, so that should be clear. And then the other nusus from the Qur'an, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about vain and idle speech. Now, you mentioned about being good music. Again, think about this. That's very subjective. Because if I want to listen to some soft jazz for the groove, maybe I feel that that is, uh, it's not causing me to do haram. In fact, maybe I remember some uh, positive things and some social consciousness and the, uh, and positive things. And maybe I even think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very possible because there are musicians that are Muslim that even sing and rap and other things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about Jannah. So that is very uh, relative and subjective of what determines. There's no way we can say, oh, the music of the past was okay, but nowadays there's no 
uh, it doesn't equal, equate to that. No, there's social conscious music nowadays. No, there are positive. There's positive speech in music and ID and and ideas in music now, and some that even encourage good manners and akhlaq and unity. But it's still muharram. It's still impermissible occur, uh, because of the nasus we already mentioned, and because it's it's the Quran of the Shaitan and the other things that are uh, uh, tied with that, associated with that. So as far as that, uh, you can look up much more information uh, and find people who have extensively spoken about that. That is just some of what I can offer from some of the speech of the scholars. As far as the other uh, aspect of your question that you mentioned, you mentioned about Sheikh Jibreel. Rahimullah Ta'ala. First, before we even think about, uh, before we answer that, we have to think about a couple of very important points. The Prophet Alayhi Salat Wasalam said, Inna Allaha la yanzi'ul ilm min al nas bada an atahum muhu walakinahu yakbidu al ilma yakbid al ulama hatta ida lam yabqi alamin attakhad al nas Ru'usin juhalin Fasu'ilu Fa'afto Bighayr al-ilm Fadallu wa adallu The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in an uh, authentic hadith in a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Verily Allah does not remove the knowledge from the people after he has given it to them However, he removes he, he removes it by Taking the ulama, meaning the ulama die. And until there will not remain an alam, so we lose ulama, we lose giants in the uh, throughout history, we have and we will continue until there will not be any ulama. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and this is prophecy, at nasu ru'usin juhalin. Then the people will take the ignorant. The heads of ignorant as uh, as scholars, and they will ask them, and they will give fatwa easily. How many people do you see now? Look at this Muslim girl hashtag. Look at all these people who have never studied anything about Islam. Give you every opinion about what is halal and what is haram, and they know nothing about Islam nor do they encourage you, nor do they know the scholars, nor do they refer to the scholars, nor will they ever think about the scholars unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with guidance. And what happens? They give fatwa without knowledge, and they misguide, and they are misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ يُرْفَعِ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem Allah raises those who believe from amongst you and those who He has given knowledge different levels. This is the shan of Ahl al ilm And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al ulama. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Verily, the, those who fear Allah the most are the ulama. They're the ulama. And especially the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, of course. Those who are adhering to the book, the Sunnah, and the Madhab of the Salaf. You mention Shaykh Jibreel. Rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatin wasiyah. And you mention that some Salafi brothers uh, say don't get, have, don't, uh, say rahmatullah alayhi, uh, alayhi and they do they call him a ikhwani innovator first I'll just say this that my position not that it matters but since you asked me my position is he was an alam an alam of ahl sunnah who made some mistakes as we all make mistakes he had an issue and it was maybe his acceptance of groups like Akhwan al-Muslimin and Jama'at al-Tabliq. So what do we say? We say it's a khafa. This is a mistake min hajiyah. But this does not nullify all the ilm that Jabal 
because he wasn't he wasn't lightweight. It's not just like a lightweight scholar, someone who had a little something. This was one of the Kibara ulama, one of the major scholars. Any book that I can find, I've bought every book that I, I've ever seen his name on. So that's my position. Is he's an alim, and in those fatawa that he made, or his leaning, if he had a leaning towards that, I don't accept that. I say, may Allah forgive him for that. Bas. And benefit from his ilm. Because his ilm was wasiyah. He had a, immense ilm. Immense knowledge. So that's number one. Number two, Imam Fouzan was asked about this question. That some of the people, they don't say exactly this question. That he should not, uh, we shouldn't say, may Allah have mercy upon him. And Sheikh Salih bin Fouzan, you'll find this, you can find it on the internet. He refuted that. And said that's that's not acceptable. He was an alim, and uh, ulama yusibu yuhti. They they get things correct and they get things mistaken. But to rush to take an alim because this is one of the kawaid of ahl sunnah. This yaktalaf on kawaid ahl bidah. This is the different difference between ahl sunnah and ahl bidah. Ahl bidah will rush to make takfir of people. This is ahl bidah, like the khawarij and these contemporary takfirin. And there are those who rush to take people off the sunnah who they have a leaning, they have a, a tashbi, a resemblance to the people of takfir. Because they rush without any dawabit, without any criterion, and without any really strong knowledge, and a lot of times blind following, to take people off the sunnah. And this is an equal danger that has plagued the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As far as uh, him being ikhwani and an innovator, I want to say that, yes, some of our ulama, like Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullahi rahmatin wasiya, said about Jibreen, ikhwani, 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 if I recall, I listened to it myself, where he said it like three times, okay? This is, look at this, this is between an alim and an alim. But if you want to blind follow, as many of the shabab do, they can't even look at the issue with, uh, as an issue of alim, they blind follow, oh, uh, Ahmed and Najmi said it, khalas. Okay, that's fine if you take that position. If you don't want to take from Jibreel, that is an effect on you. It doesn't affect that imam. But to go around and eating his flesh and spending time belittling someone who was one of the major scholars here, accepted, and is known for his ilm wa even if he made some mistakes in those, some minhaji issues, then this is a this is a great uh, a grievous uh, harm, and you should fear Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala, when it comes to the ulama especially. And I'm going to give you a real example that happened to me. I was in Medina uh, with uh, a sheikh, and we went to go to the sh to Sheikh uh, Abdul uh, Sheikh Ali Nasser Faqih's house. Okay, and this sheikh is very was very close. I, I can't think of an, an alim from Ahl Sunnah, from Riyadh to, to Medina to wherever that he doesn't know. He had relations with everyone. He's well known. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And we went to the Sheikh's house and I mentioned to the Sheikh, I don't, I had some questions and I said, Sheikh, and I was talking about one of the big Hizbis that are well known from Salafi scholars. I don't know any of the Salafi scholars that defend this particular individual because he's known as one of the harakiyin, one of the people of, uh, uh, you know, political uh, uh, political activity and, and so forth. And also used to, in his past, speak about the, the government on the member. Okay. So I mentioned this because I was doing my research and I mentioned a question. I said, Sheikh, you know what Sheikh Ali Nasser said to me? And I will never forget this lesson. Because this is the gold you get from major scholars. Sitting in the presence of major scholars, you get gold. This Imam, Imam Ali Nasser Faqih, Hafizullah Ta'ala, and I don't know why people don't spend more time with these Imams when they go to Medina. Instead, sometimes they sit with people who have less knowledge and less stat stature, but, you know, everyone's going to do what they need to do. This Imam said to me, he said, you should be careful with what you said. I was shocked because I expected him to jump on the bandwagon and just boom. The Sheikh said, you should fear Allah. He said, he could take you to the mahkamah in this country and get you, you know, basically get you lashed or get you in trouble for what you said. I, I was shocked. I was like, man, I just put my head down. And then the Sheikh who's with me, he said, 
He knew from off cap page numbers in books. He said in this book, Sheikh da 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 da, and in this book he said this Sheikh and da 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 da. This you know why our brother Khalid is asking this question. So then the, you know the Sheikh dealt with that. But the point I'm, I'm mentioning this to just be cautious with the ulama. There may be no reason for you to speak about a great imam like this, or even if you don't want to take from him. There may be no benefit in you speaking about a particular individual if there's no benefit. If there's a benefit of talking about someone who's from Ahl al-Bid'ah, that's clear, then okay. But you can be guilty of backbiting Ahl al-Bid'ah if you're just eating their flesh. If you're just talking about people just for talking to people, a su'a qast, with an improper intention, this is very dangerous and it will be sinful. You have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's who we fear tabarak wa ta'ala. We don't fear the men. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the ulama of Ahl sunnah and forgive them of their faults and sins because no one is free from faults and sins. And our messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayna khatayna tawabun wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad which means all the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad.